Welcome back, everybody. So there is a lot of conversation right now about daylight saving time. Everyone's got an opinion. We're going to roll back the clock back an hour on Sunday at 2 o'clock in the morning. That means an extra hour of sleep this weekend, but it also means earlier sunsets. Now, two states do not observe daylight saving time in Hawaii and Arizona, and there's been a lot of talk about getting rid of it. But to be able to do it, Congress would have to pass federal legislation. A new APNORC poll finds only about 12% of adults are in favor of daylight saving time. 47% are opposed and 40% are neutral. The time change can also impact our health. To talk more about that, we're joined now by Ashur Ali, Dr. Ashur Ali, neurologist at Henry Ford Health. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time. There's been lots of studies, lots of reports, but lay it out for us. Is this actually bad for us? You know, it's kind of a mixed picture, uh, and from a brain perspective in particular, the brain is, you know, particularly sensitive to changes in schedule. So you can almost think about a time change being like a sort of a mini jet lag. And because the brain is what controls our circadian rhythm and our sleep-wake cycles, it, uh, it, it, sometimes if there's a change in that, it can cause, you know, a bit of disruption in our neuronal function, which can affect certain states and certain diseases can sometimes worsen when, a time cha when the time changes. So is that, that's a temporary thing. It sounds like any long-term effects? Doesn't seem like there's any long-term effects. I mean, all the studies so far that show any changes or some worsening tend to uh, be just in the, the first week, maybe two after, but most are within the first three to five days where we get acclimated after that. Gotcha. So what's your advice then for people who are trying to avoid those kind of issues and symptoms? Yeah, I mean, for people that that struggle with certain neurologic disorders, for in diseases such as uh, either migraine or sleep disorders or even mental health related disorders, just being aware that there could be a shift early on, I think, is probably the most important thing that they can do. You know, knowing that in the evening hours, especially with this time change, that I'm going to be a little bit more fatigued, maybe a decreased level of alertness, a little bit of brain fog, especially in the evening hours, uh, and just being mindful of that. Maybe that's not the right time for me to go out and drive. Um, and then knowing that I'm going to be more awake in the morning because, you know, the sun's going to rise a little bit earlier, taking advantage of that. And so the advice would be to make sure that you get some sunlight nice and early in the morning so that your circadian rhythm and your the clock in the brain can sort of reset itself according to, you know, what's going to come. And I would assume that, or maybe I'm wrong here, you're the doctor, but I would assume that there are probably more issues when we lose that hour versus gaining it. Yeah, so, uh, well, it's interesting. Most studies show that changes in health, negative changes in health happen in the springtime when we spring forward. And uh, in particular, there's a slight increased risk of stroke that can happen in that first week after mm. many sleep disorders as well. Um, in fact, what's interesting is when the time changes in the fall and we sort of get that extra hour of sleep, uh, migraine actually improves for the first week after, which is pretty unique. Uh, but yeah, most of the sort of negative impacts you can say tend to happen in the springtime when we spring forward. Yeah. Okay, Doctor, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you on this Halloween. Absolutely. Take care.